Last night, my wife informed me that there's a new movie popping off on Netflix called The Deliverance. And I said, what, just now people are excited about this film? It's been out since 1972. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's cool that a new generation is kind of getting their feet wet with this film. You know, squeal like a pig. Ding, 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 ding. It's a haunting thriller that absolutely holds up today. What an exciting time. She said, shut up, you stupid idiot. You misunderstood me. I didn't say deliverance. I said the deliverance. This is a 2024 vehicle. That kind of bummed me out because deliverance is a classic and the 2024 movie sounds like it's a straight to streaming services, a streamer. Those aren't the best, but I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt if it's getting high praise online. It's surely going to be good, right? It's not going to be a bunch of people chasing clout, pretending something's great that's not for one reason or the other. So I checked out The Deliverance with my wife, and I have some thoughts. The intro's done now. It sucks. This was a terrible movie. What in the hell is wrong with people online? Where does one even begin? All right, let's get the basics out of the way. First off, it's rated R. It's almost two hours long. And it's a horror thriller about a strange demonic creature that's in this house with these people that are all unlikable pricks. What's gonna happen? <laughs> let me let me pop the brakes for a second. Actually, only the mom is really unlikable, but she is the focus of the film. The kids are just kind of stock characters that don't really do much, but they get corrupted or possessed pretty early on. So you don't really know what their personalities were like ahead of time. You're just kind of thrown into this boring family where stuff slowly kind of occurs. Glenn Close is in this. I, I, I don't know why. I feel bad for her. This is an embarrassing film for her to be in, especially later on when she's... I don't, even, I don't know if I should do spoilers on this. You know what? I'll do spoiler stuff. So let me, let me first just talk about what to expect for those that don't want anything ruined. Even though if you watch this movie, your day will be ruined. What you have here is a really garbage version of The Conjuring. Loosely based on a true story. Stuff happens on a cage short for occasion, and in between, it's just a bunch of really corny dialogue with this mom who is so over the top. I know she grew up on tough times in the, the mean streets, but typically, when you watch a movie about people that have saltier language and they grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, they all kind of sound similar. Like, look at Straight Outta Compton, for instance. But here, the mother, Ebony, is the only one that's like a gangster. But everyone else, her mother, her friends, her kids, they all talk normal. So it's just Ebony like, I will fuck you up. Who do you think you're talking to? And then everybody else is like, uh, sorry, ma'am. Have a good day. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but uh, it felt very disconnected here. She seemed very over the top with the performance. You get to watch Glenn Close rock a disgusting spray tan the entire film. You get one of the kids from Stranger Things just going through the motions in this film. Monique's in this. She shows up once in a while. I always liked her, aka Precious, based on the book Push by Sapphire. This movie's really tedious. That's probably the best way I can say it. And there, it's really not scary at all. It's supposed to be like a horror thriller. There is nothing even remotely scary in this. The tone is terrible. The pacing is awful. Even scenes of dialogue. Early on, I knew we were in trouble watching this because they're all sitting around the kitchen table and the daughter and mom are having a dialogue. It's not flowing at all. The other people at the table just kind of sit there waiting for their turn to say their one line and move on. There's awkward pauses. There's gaps of time that go on too long. There's weird freeze frame shots in the film. There's some really bad ADR. Later in the film, there's a character rolling around on the ground freaking out and the camera pulls away from her, and every time the camera's not on the person, they start talking, clearly added lines afterwards. The camera moves back, and the person's still finishing the sentence when it's back on her face, and her mouth's not moving. It's just comically poorly made. And I can't emphasize enough, there's just nothing scary in this. I truly don't know what people are excited about. I, I didn't see any of this, the reviews myself. My wife has a completely different algorithm than I do, and, and I really don't go on social media that much. So I do rely on her to tell me, hey, Adam, people are talking about this film. You should watch it and review it. And more often than not, I'm completely perplexed by what people are enjoying in these streamers. Are we just that desperate for something to talk about again? To get excited about something? 
because there's really nothing in this film that I haven't seen a thousand times over. And it's funny, that Exorcist movie that came out last year that got pretty much critically destroyed, that film is far and away better than this. Way more intense scenes, better acting, cinematically more exciting to look at. It's just all around better. And that movie wasn't good either. It was just better than this. So long story short, I did not like this movie at all. Now let me get into a couple of hilarious moments of the film in spoiler territory. If you don't want to hear them, you know, I guess walk away. But um, there, there's a scene fairly early on. Uh, by the way, the, the, the premise of this, I should say, is this family lives in a house. The house is haunted or something. Stuff is occasionally taking place. This mom is a stylist at a hair salon. She somehow, well, they establish she's on hard times. Not that it really seems to matter much in the course of the film. She doesn't seem to care that she can't afford her bills. Her mom's got cancer, so she's going through chemo. This daughter, who is a hairstylist, is somehow paying for the chemo medication, and she's paying for this pretty big, nice house. It's not like a small, little, shitty thing. It's a nice place that they're living at. You know, all things considered. She's an alcoholic, so she's constantly raging out. She's falling off the wagon, or, or I think it's off the wagon. Maybe it's on the wagon. It's something to do with the wagon. She's drinking. She's hitting her kids. She's just trash all around. And as the movie starts to unfold, weird things start happening to the kids, specifically the youngest child, who's sleepwalking around. He's smashing his head into doors that the mom just kind of like shrugs off, even though he has a massive welt along his forehead. She's like, eh, you're fine. Uh, well, why were you downstairs, you little idiot? There's a scene early on where there's flies everywhere, mosquitoes, whatnot, and they don't really bother to look for the source of it. They're just kind of like, ugh, get out of here. Get out of here. They open the basement door at one time. The mom doesn't go down the stairs to check things out. I don't know why. It's because it's a rental house. I'm actually in a rental right now in between homes. And I, I try to keep up with things. Especially if I see mosquitoes conjugating around an area. I'm going to go check it out. Thankfully that hasn't happened yet. Because, you know, I, I take care of the place. But she, she doesn't even go downstairs. She calls an exterminator. The dude pulls out a dead cat. He's like, here's your problem. That'll be $60. She's like, I'm not paying no motherfucking $60, you piece of shit. I'm sorry, what? Then tell him to throw it back down there and you'll pick it up and throw it out. It's really not that big of a deal. You could have avoided this entire conversation and situation had you just gone down there. At another point in the film, since the son is sleepwalking and doing weird shit, he goes into the kitchen, pops open the fridge, and starts chugging milk. It's just nasty. It's coming down all over the place on the floor. And then a crow smashes into the glass on the window, cracking it. The next morning, was it in his head? Nothing happens. Was it a dream? I don't know. They never address any milk on the floor. The fact that his clothes were soaked in milk. The broken windows repaired. But then everything else in the film actually happens and they notice it. A really tasteful scene. Really the only intense moment in the film, which again isn't intense, is Stranger Things kid is, uh, he's laughing hysterically at a teacher who lost a son. And then the daughter has her period live on stage. And then the youngest son picks up his own feces, throws it at someone. And apparently he ate some. I don't think they showed that, but the mom mentioned that he, he had a nice helping full of his own stool. This is cinema. The reason why this movie is called The Deliverance is because there are apostles out there in the real world that are able to touch the, the body of someone who's possessed by demons and the demon will be released. And such a woman shows up later in the film around uh, a little over the hour mark of this miserable two hour film. And she's like, yeah, I'm an apostle. I roam around the countryside, around the city, trying to find people that need me. I get you know touched by the Lord and Savior and I say, hello, Hello, God, what do you need? And, and Jesus says, JC, I call him JC, says, you got to head over to this house. It's messed up again. And I'm like, oh, that place 20 years ago, a family died because of that stupid pesky demon. And these demons are just fallen angels. And so she heads over there. She's like, let's head to the house. And yeah, they, there's someone that needs to be deliverized. And so she's going to deliver this boy that's been possessed by a fallen angel. And using the boy as a conduit of sorts, he's able to also graft on to the other two kids, which is causing them to do crazy shit. So the deliverance lady comes in and she unsuccessfully delivers, deliverizes the, the boy. The boy ends up killing her. 
it's a, it's too it's really too bad but before this happens the little boy actually in demon form chokes out glenn close kills her and then he will take the shape of her in a demon form which is just awful looking makeup with these long nails and she has the funniest fucking voice ever she's like oh hello daughter how are you today <laughs> it's so bad <laughs> why glenn close why it was at about this point that I was fully checked the fuck out. We, we somehow finished it, fast forwarding here and there, getting little bits and pieces of the final remnants of the movie. It, it, it looks like good prevails. Uh, the mom becomes the strong female we always knew she could be. She's able to stand up against the evil demon and, uh, and deliverize it from eternity. Send it back to hell where it belongs. And then she and her family leave that house and they go off on their next adventure together how exciting this movie was terrible from front to back i i don't get how anybody likes it i just there's nothing appealing here for me from the way it's shot the way it's acted the way it's presented nothing an example of like how conjuring or any other basic horror movie plays out is you have to start on the right note this film does not have an interesting hook. It starts in a bedroom with a painting. The mom's already yelling at her son. And then you have a boring dinner scene. And then you have a boring other scene. And there's no exciting hook that leads people to watch this film. So oftentimes you will see a, a kill right away. Or at least a haunting right away. Or something that sets the table, sets the tone. This doesn't get that right. And that just already set me off. That's the tried and true formula. So when you break formula, you better have something interesting to bring. And this didn't. All right, those are my thoughts. Let me know if you watched The Deliverance and why you should just skip it and watch Deliverance instead. That one's much better. Not even close to the same type of movie, but regardless, solid psychological thriller. All right, let me know. Leave a comment below. Please think about subscribing to the channel. I post movie reviews, rants, live streams every week. Would love to have you stick around. I have a brand new second channel, Adam Does Rants. It's just like this, except for I'm complaining about first world problems, hopefully making you laugh along the way. If you love what I'm doing, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Tons of exclusives over there. Plus, you're just helping me and my one-man band. And I would appreciate it. Hopefully, I see you next time.